Since its debut a quarter century ago, the Forester has moved 2.6 million people to buy a new Subaru in the US alone. That's why the redesigned 2025 Subaru Forester maintains a lot of the features that people love about the small SUV while adding a few key engineering, safety, and convenience upgrades to make it even more appealing than ever. The most obvious changes to the 2025 Subaru Forester show up on the exterior. For example, the front end is clipped almost line for line from the larger Subaru Ascent, and the side profile gets these really cool geometric wheel arches that look like they came from the Subaru WRX. Something I love about the side profile though is the reshaped window opening. To my eyes, this lower belt line looks just a little bit like the first and second generation Foresters, which were less SUVs and more funky lifted wagons. I absolutely love it. I think it looks great. The back of the Subaru Forester also includes a few little design detail updates, including this full width taillight panel that Subaru says helps the car look more planted without actually being any wider and therefore less maneuverable. My favorite little Easter egg though is this little symmetrical all wheel drive badge on the D pillar. I think it's just kind of a fun little callback to what has made Subaru so popular in the United States. If the exterior of the Forester looks a little bit familiar, things change drastically once you get underneath the skin. Although the engine under the hood is carryover, a 2.5 liter flat four making 180 horsepower and 178 pound feet in this application, the rest of the car's structure has been extensively redesigned. For example, the Forester now uses a full unibody frame construction design, which means that the side panels and the floor panel are all assembled in one piece before the exterior panels are bolted on. This allows Subaru to use even more structural adhesives and welding to give the Forester 10% greater structural rigidity than before. That enables cool stuff like square door openings and hatch openings with even greater safety promised. Speaking of, the Forester will also get a revised version of Subaru's EyeSight Active Driver Assistance Suite. Now, in addition to the stereo cameras, there's also a center wide angle mono camera giving the car an even better view of the road ahead and improving its sensitivity to things like pedestrians and cyclists. The interior of the Forester has also been redesigned primarily to take advantage of the Subaru Starlink 11.6 inch touchscreen that's available on other products. The 11.6 inch touchscreen also includes wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay standard, as well as a wireless charging pad for your smartphone. If you go for a base model, however, you're gonna get a smaller screen with wired smartphone integration, that said, I think most buyers are probably gonna go for trim levels that get this larger screen. Elsewhere in the cabin, the Forester's been redesigned with some pretty impressive materials considering the segment. You find padding in all the usual places like the armrests and the door panels, but certain inserts have been designed with durability in mind so that when you're loading and unloading kids and cargo, you're not gonna get those scuffs and scrapes that just make your car look super dated and old after only a few months of use. I also really appreciate that Subaru even thought to pad the knee bolster, probably because a greater percentage of Forester owners actually take their cars off road. So they're gonna be banging up against this thing all the time when they're driving down a rocky trail. And that's really nice that Subaru thought to consider the health and safety of their knees. The practicality quotient of the Subaru Forester continues into the largest cargo area that the company has ever put on its small SUV. As you can see, the liftover height is relatively low. The hatch opening is very wide and very squared off on the corners, and you can fit very tall items through without having to kind of finagle them in. And that's because of some of the new engineering upgrades that the company has put into this car's platform. Another interesting feature of the cargo area are these screw-in tie-down hooks. Subaru says that you can put a bunch of different accessories onto these points, including horizontal bars that enable two-level cargo loading, allowing you to keep your dirty stuff separate from your clean stuff. The 2025 Subaru Forester goes on sale in the first half of next year, and pricing has not been disclosed, but you could probably plan on it being a little bit more expensive than the current model. It'll do battle with the likes of the Honda CRV and the Toyota RAV4, but as you can see, it maintains plenty of that typical Subaru versatility and personality that should make it a unique offering in the small crossover segment. For the full debut post of the 2025 Subaru Forester, please click the link in the description to visit motorone.com. And while you're up there, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media. That's Facebook, Instagram, Threads, X, and TikTok, and catch up with us there.